When one begins a study of the Old Testament, it often starts with great expectations. These expectations may focus on unpacking the tapestry of history, stories, traditions, religious rites, epics, poetry, parables, and stories of great heroes. Sometimes those expectations are fulfilled, but often they're not because the true intent of the Old Testament is either ignored or unrecognized. The Old Testament is best understandable when approached with the question, how does this testify of God? The Old Testament then begins to yield up its vast storehouse of testimony of the promised Messiah. The creator and the God of the Old Testament is Jehovah, who became the Son of God as Jesus of Nazareth. In 2 Nephi, we read, there is a God and he is Christ. It is this key from the Book of Mormon that makes the study of the Old Testament a delight. To prepare the world for Jesus Christ's atonement, his gospel runs throughout every story, character, and teaching of the Old Testament, not always with simplicity, but with luxurious symbolism of ancient Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 6 offers a type of guide to study the Old Testament. It contains three principles that will help elucidate one's study of the Old Testament the fundamental dogma, monotheism, the fundamental duty, love, and the fundamental discipline, the study of law. First, the fundamental teaching is that the Lord, the Redeemer, the Rock of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, is Jesus Christ and the Lord and Savior. One of the most beloved passages in Deuteronomy reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All things given of God typify Jesus Christ. All things testify of the divinity, power, role and purpose of the Lord. In the Old Testament, even the lives of the prophets, not just their teachings, typify Christ. Ancient Israel forgot, rebelled, and lost the knowledge, power, and heart of the Old Testament. Instead of an overt witness of Christ, the Torah became merely an ethical law, the prophets simply an historical record, the writings merely poetry or wisdom literature. And using the lens of the Restoration, the student of the Old Testament will come to see that none of the prophets have written nor prophesied, save they have spoken concerning this Christ. Next, the fundamental duty is love. In one of the most oft-repeated Old Testament passages, we read in Deuteronomy 6, 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. The love of God is defined by personal actions. Love is about duty, responsibility, service, care, honor, respect, and obedience. It is not just an emotional, warm, fuzzy enthusiasm. Rabbi Dr. Joseph Herz explained, the meaning of the love of God is that a man should be longing and yearning after the nearness of God and striving to reach his holiness in the same manner as he would pursue any object for which he feels a strong passion. He should feel that bliss and delight in mentioning his name, in uttering his praises, and in occupying himself with the words of the Torah. It is this longing, yearning, striving love for the Holy One of Israel, Jesus Christ, which will bring us to him as we study the Old Testament. Finally, the fundamental discipline is the study of the law. Deuteronomy 6, 6-9 reads, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be the frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. The injunction to teach, talk, bind, and write requires active participation in the process of redemption. There is no passive absorption of thoughts. It is an enthusiastic gathering of concepts. The nature of God, His laws, covenants, and duties to the Lord are to be written upon the hearts of Israel, and it is to be in their inmost parts. This process takes great effort. The work of study and teaching by Israel, both the nation and the individual, is a never-ending concern and practice. The whole of life, when one is sitting, walking, lying down, and rising, should be concentrated on uncovering or revealing the God of Israel. The fundamental dogmas remind us to focus on Christ, to approach Him with love, and to work at internalizing the Word. This Christocentric approach to study the Old Testament will yield great rewards. And through this study, we can all, like Nephi, testify my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. For for this end hath the law of Moses been given, 
and all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him.